Hello and welcome to a very special mini Ink Tank podcast. Uh, instead of leaving you guys with nothing because my computer got hungry and decided to eat the main podcast file, me, Ricky, and our new editor, Noel, that recorded, I thought I would give you this mini podcast, share a few ideas, you know, uh, when, well, in the meantime, we can re-record the main podcast. Um, so, essentially, what this episode is going to discuss is formatting for submissions. Um, it's a problem that I've seen a lot of young writers struggle with. Um, they don't know how to generally format. There are general rules, and there are specific rules for each publication. They all have it slightly differently. Um, I'm going to get into the main rules of, you know, in general, how you can submit to most publications, how they like it. And then, you know, you always want to read the submission guidelines of each site that you, or publication, that you're submitting to. You want to um, basically, you know, give your work the best leg forward. Uh, what this shows by, you know, going through all the guidelines, sometimes it can be tedious, sometimes they can be very simple, but what it does is it presents your work in the best way possible. That way, when the editor picks it up, they know exactly what they're looking at, it shows you're paying attention, it shows you're keen, that you want to get published, and it also shows that you care about your work. Um, I have received emails from people that just had the file attached, no name, no title, just a piece of work. and. It shows how much you care. As a writer, uh, we want to know you are passionate about your piece because if you're passionate, more than likely some other people are going to want to read and see what type of stuff you're writing. So, essentially, the first thing I'm going to talk about is mainly for digital, um, it, less for actual print publications, uh, depending on how they accept their things, um, is the actual email and file format that you send it to the magazine in. Um, essentially, you know, one of the first things the editor ever sees when they receive your piece is the body of the email and the attachment you do. Uh, very simply, the attachment of your file, you want to do it in a smart way. Um, I've seen very, very many kind of strange or just thoughtless uh, file names. Um, I've had random numbers, random letters, and you don't know how many times I get just ink tank submission as the file name. Now, if everyone did that, when looking at the list of files I have, I have no clue who wrote each one. If I'm looking for a specific file written by a specific person or a specific story by a certain title, you know, it's hard to find it. Um, so what I always recommend doing is either put your name, the title, as the file name, you know, um, you can always go your name dash your title dash ink tank submission if you want to. If that's your version of it, sending it to us, like your final version, yeah, no problem. Put ink tank submission in there somewhere. That's not an issue. But just having ink tank submission makes your file generic, easy to lose, and it's a lot more trouble for us running around. Um, the second thing, getting back to that email, the body of the email. What you want to do is you want to basically create a cover letter in there. Now, there's a, some things you can include in that cover letter uh, that most editors need. Um, depending on how seriously they take the things, they might want your name, your address, your email address, your phone number. Under no circumstances are you actually supposed to include a social insurance number. Um, basically what it does is one of two things. One, if they're actually needing it to verify you're a person for some unknown reason, and remember kids, you're not supposed to give this out to random people on the internet, so no one send me their social insurance number, please. But essentially, some magazines do require it for payment, because they have taxes and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's presumptuous to send it to them, saying, oh, you're going to like my piece so much that you're going to pay me. So you want to avoid doing that. Um, so, and then after that, different magazines, different publications, they ask you for different stuff. Some of them ask you for a byline. Some of them don't want a byline until they contact you to send it to them. So remember, always read their submission guidelines, figure out what they want, what they don't want, and follow them so you can seem professional, you can seem like you're well informed, and you show that you care about your work. And that way, the editor who's reading your piece will likely try to care about it too. So, getting into the actual file and how to format your page. 
Um, first of all, you want to have at least one inch margins on both the top, the bottom, left and right. Um, that gives you, a, if they're publication you're submitting to actually prints off the documents, it gives them room to make notes around. Um, the same thing as uh, if they want to make inline notes, if you're writing prose, a short story, short fiction, flash fiction, novella, whatever the heck it is, double space your work. Um, that gives the editor, and I know I find this handy sometimes when I'm editing my own work, lots of room to write in notes, circle things, make whatever comments they need to. Um, there is an exception for this if you are submitting poetry, on the other hand, unless it's prose poetry, only single space it. Um, because there's going to be lots of room on the edge of margins normally, because most poetry is very short lined. Um, so they're going to have enough room to make those notes, and it just kind of looks ugly having a very short line and double spacing it. Um, so now font wise, um, what there's two main fonts that the most editors enjoy looking at um, Courier or Times New Roman. Um, essentially, you don't want to go like Comet Sans or a bunch of the funny ones out there. Uh, even if their website uses those strange uh, fonts, keep it simple, keep it regular, unless there is precedent in your story or in your piece for a change in font. Um, again, you want to default to 12 point, not 11 point, not 13. You want to default it to 12 point because that is industry standard. Um, and here's another point that you know differs from publication to publication: cover letter versus prefatory information. Um, essentially, the difference between this is some publications like having a full page just for that information ahead of your submission. Um, other pieces, publications, they just want the prefatory information at the top, then your title, then the piece. Um, there's not really a huge difference between the two. Um, I guess it saves paper if they're actually printing it off, and it does look neater if you have just a cover page. It allows the piece to actually speak for itself, depending on how much information they're requiring. Ink Tank, for instance, actually we do appreciate having a cover letter um, ahead of the submissions. That way we don't have to go back into our email address to find your email to contact you to talk to you about the submissions or other things regarding your piece. It just makes things a little bit easier for us. Um, we like the cover letter also because then we have your byline, your bio right there. We have a very brief sentence about how and what you're trying to do with your piece. Um, that way, you know, we can come in and because we're reading all these pieces blind, like we've never read them before, we've never read a lot of the stuff from the authors before, we don't know their themes, their ideas, what they're trying to accomplish, it gives us a better way to gauge if you've actually done it or not. Um, and remember, always, always, always title your pieces. Um, I've gotten a lot of pieces that haven't had a title. Um, if you can't think up of a title, you really have to. Um, there's really not an excuse to not have a title on your piece, I'm afraid. Um, unless you're intentionally, for some reason, leaving it as untitled, uh, that can be acceptable in some cases, but I'm just talking in general, you need to have a title. Um, it's a big gamble for to allow the editors to come up with a title, because a title establishes how a reader is first introduced to your piece. You want to be able to create that yourself. Um, so getting back into some of the nitty gritty about the actual formatting, you want to left align all of your um, form, like all of your paragraphs, unless again you have precedent in, in there for it. Uh, you're doing shape poetry where you need to right align it, or you need to have it all over the place, right? But in general, you want to left align most of your prose. You that way, you know your editor knows what's going on justification even though it might look good to you. It actually spaces things out differently on the page, adds random spaces depending on how many words are on that line, and makes things more difficult to read for your editors. So a high recommendation is have that left align, the right side is jagged, don't worry about it. Um, and here is one huge thing that just last year was a huge like debate in the blogosphere it deals with double spacing after end periods. Um, essentially, you know, there's debates about when this started, what it was there for, people like it, some people don't. 
Uh, HTML automatically takes out the double spacing apparently, so it's not a big deal. Um, essentially what we're talking about is I write, Bob went down to the park, period, space, space. He enjoyed himself, period, space, space. What those double spaces do is they signal your intent to the editor that yes, indeed, a like a sentence is intended to end there. It is not some sort of error. Um, so again, HTML automatically takes those out, so it's a lot less of a deal for um, like online publications such as Ink Tank, such as a couple of the other magazines that are available out there. Um, so that's just a personal thing of mine. I know there's a thousand different opinions out there on it. Um, a lot of magazines don't like it, but since HTML already clears it out, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so, you know, do whatever you like. If a publication is going to say, no, 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 I'm not publishing this because you used a double space, you probably don't want to be published with them anyways. So if you have any questions regarding this or follow-up things, you can always put stuff in the comments below. And also, you know, do a Google search out there. Um, one of the main um, sort of sources for this, an expert out there, um, I believe his name is William Shun. Um, his website is www.shunn.net slash format and that's where you can find a lot of his sort of blog and other ideas generally on the format. Um, he created an essay about, you know, in 1995, I think, um, that, you know, created a lot of the precedent for a lot of the way manuscripts are submitted. Um, so I guess he was the grandfather of my whole spiel here. Um, some of the things I feel a little bit outdated on that essay, so take them with a grain of salt. But again, you know, um, you need to know where to start. So hopefully that information was helpful to you. Um, I hope you don't have any trouble with formatting anymore after this whole spiel. Um, also, I want to let you everybody know that right now Ink Tank is still looking for uh, fodder for our podcast. Essentially what we do on our, on our main podcast is we go through a submitted manuscript um, normally a, pr a short story or so, um, we don't, can't read novellas, we can't read novels, uh, unfortunately we just don't have the time for those. Um, but what we do is we read early drafts or things that weren't published elsewhere and we give our thoughts on it, not just a critique for the author, but we feel a lot of um, common mistakes are made throughout and we like discussing those. Our, we hope our podcasts are educational to everyone. Um, so you can always send submissions to podcast at inktankmagazine.com. That way, you know, we have stuff to record, you have stuff to watch, and hopefully, you know, we all have a good time with it. So until next time, my name is Blair Boshane, Editor-in-Chief of inktankmagazine.com. Have a good one.